They seem to have forgotten that uh, uh, what, what the Americans did in World War II. They're per apparently not that appreciative of it, so it's not necessarily a holiday. <coughs> um, they still remember Queen Victoria last week, but uh, this week they decided to sort of, you know, uh, the, the Memorial Day weekend. Uh, the, I guess they kind of decided to do away with it. It wasn't that important to them, so. That's, that's the way socialism goes. That's the way, you know, if, 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 if you heard this often from uh, a lot of the European social left com countries stating that America is the, a 200 year old mistake. And I guess it was a mistake that we went in and actually uh, saved Europe uh, during World War II and World War I uh, because apparently it's not appreciated. So. That's sort of the way, I, you know, my view is, as, a, as an American, even though I'm living in Canada, is I don't see that people really care about their freedoms too much anymore. Uh, they're willing easily to give them up. Uh, in Europe, uh, people easily identify themselves as communists and, and socialists. Uh, so, basically, at this point in time, because uh, uh, this is the way the majority of Europe feels, uh, I, I, my particular point of view is that uh, because they feel like this, I think World, uh, the American involvement in terms of saving Europe in World War One and World War Two is a waste of time. Uh, all those people died for nothing. Uh, it, you know, if they if they are willing to give up their freedoms like this, and the same thing, the le you know, anyone who identifies themselves with the social left, like Michael Moore and, and a lot of Hollywood then uh, I don't really see the purpose of sending people in and, and this is, this is where, where they sort of brought this out in Iraq and in Afghanistan. They don't see the purpose of going in and freeing people. They don't want to do nation building, as they call it. They, you know, leave people to themselves and whatever happens, happens. So, you know, we should have done the same thing in Europe, you know. Hitler came around, wiped out a whole bunch of people. No problem, <laughs> you know. That's something that happens. They can leave these people to themselves. Our way is not necessarily the right way. We should have just let Europe, you know, s sink into Nazism because it, you know, or into socialism because it's already there anyway. So there was no need. And I think it's, this is what it was the feeling. Uh, 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 up until the point of the Battle of Britain, even Britain felt like there was no point in going to war with uh, Germany. So this feeling seems to have reared itself uh, once again. Uh, because they kind of forgotten what actually what Hitler has done, they did to Europe. They've kind of forgotten this, uh, and so the understanding of freedom is no longer important because most of Europe has given up their freedom for socialism. They believe in the state's uh, uh, power in terms of that the state is what decides what's good for the overall benefit of society. If you're going for the greater good of society, then the state is the one that decides that. Uh, that's where all your intellectuals are, and these people know better than anyone else on what to do in terms of farming, um, economics, and uh, manufacturing, all, everything. All, almost every aspect of life is ruled by the government, because these people are the intellectuals, and they know what they're doing. As you can see, I mean, look, at, look at how well Europe is doing right now. Uh, it, if you want, you know, this, this, what's happening in Europe right now in terms of the economic finance in Greece and 
Spain and so on. That's a wonderful job done by the socialists there. This is a great advertisement for socialism. You know, if you really want to live like living in Greece now and, and, and like they have in Europe, uh, it, under the current economic situation, this is a perfect, perfect example of, of what socialism can do. The, and, and, and the superiority of, of government over everyone else. So, I think, you know, with, the, with, 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 with what's going on in Europe today, you know, socialists should definitely stand up and take a bow, take credit for what they've done. Uh, They've done a great job, and the, the fact that, that you know they don't uh, think uh, Memorial Day is important anymore, you know, neither do you know for them. I I don't think we should uh, bother them anymore, uh, no matter what happens in Europe. You know, <laughs> if that's their if that's, their, if that's their view and opinion. So, anyways, um, anyway, um, just to say is that. Um, the uh, comment, the the, the uh, X plus that's going uh, going to be up for today is in the editing bay, and in a few minutes I'll be uploading it. So, <clears throat> gonna have a little bit of breakfast now, even though it's three o'clock in the afternoon. I'm just now getting to my breakfast, and I'll talk to you during the day as I uh, come up with things to say. All right. Well, it's a little past midnight, and if you've been watching uh, the latest uh, uh, X Plus, you'll know that we've got a new theme now. The opening theme has changed. The previous opening theme uh, was one that was specific to uh, the Greeks and uh, the Syrians. It was. Uh, uh, what we'll call, uh, the West will know it as. Uh, and Europeans would know it, know it as, as an Easter song. It's specific to Easter itself, and the Easter period is just about finishing. Uh, we're approaching Pentecost on the weekend for uh, for the East, East for the Eastern Christians. Uh, so, um, time to put up a new theme. That's what I did. I got the new theme going. Uh, this is the first version. I've got several versions that I want to get out of it, just to sort of test it out and see what everything looks like. So, uh, this is the first version, and uh, I think maybe every two weeks change it up a little bit to, 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 to like get the right one, the right look. Uh, so, that's what, what the thing I'm doing now is I'm learning animation, I'm learning uh, gra how to do graphic overlays in, in, a, in a better sense. And sort of, so, I want to be able to, to uh, animate gra uh, graphic titles, that's what I'm learning to do next. And so I, I actually have a lot of fun doing this. It's, it's <laughs> well, it is a lot. It is work to a certain degree, uh, or uh, I do have to spend a significant amount of time uh, doing work. Uh, it's uh, it's a, it's basically play, and that's that's actually how I approach it. Is uh, uh, I learn a lot of my stuff by playing, and I'm making right now. I'm, to, to do my animation work, to understand animation, I'm working with dolls and creating doll animation. Right now, I'm doing little pet shop, little pet shop, and then uh, from the, and then from there, I'll get into brats, moxie girls, and a couple other different dolls as well. Uh, at making these doll movies in order to get my animation skills up to the point where I can uh, really produce uh, uh, good, solid graphics and animation. These are, these are the flyby graphics, the titles, the uh, uh, the graphic overlays, all these different things. Particularly when you see them on TV, if you see a TV logo that flies by or anything like that, these are all graphic overlays. They're done in the animation. Th this is where all this comes from. Now you can sit there and, and and do all sorts of work in terms of make it all serious, or you can turn around and play with it and learn as you play. And my choice is to learn as I play because this is the way most of my work. Here goes. Uh, I use the random walk for from quantum physics. Um, that means uh, I take things in a random direction. I don't necessarily have things planned out. Uh, planning is is minimal. You got to sort of you get an idea of where you want to go, but a lot of the in between steps are sort of left open, and you allow the dynamics of the day to sort of fill in a lot of the holes and the details. 
So that's where these, that's where this is going. I'm, so I'm playing, I'm playing with, with I'm having fun playing with, uh, uh, with uh, the, the, with the dolls. I'm having fun. You know, I'm, I, I, I basically I've got that geek sense there. But I'm, I'm, I'm integrating my geek fun side uh, with the seriousness that I do in, in, uh, the, the, in terms of the research. And it, it, even when I do the serious research, it, 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 I can't say it's my serious work in terms of that I don't like it. It's also my hobby. This is just sort of just, uh, about the dolls and everything and, and, and the movie making. Is just sort of another side to it, so uh, I'm having my fun. Although I am tired, it's uh, it's, the one, it's around one o'clock in the morning now, and uh, it's going to be another long night. So I will keep up uh, vlogging through the night periodically. Maybe around three o'clock, I'll come back again, say something, and then maybe around four or five o'clock, I'll come back and say something. Yeah, you know, give it make four or five o'clock the last segment. All right, so I'm going back to my editing. Think, I'm thinking of new ways of of doing uh, the videos I'm doing. So we'll uh, get to that. Well, it's uh, three o'clock in the morning. Uh, this is not the last segment. There's going to be another segment at around five. I'm uh, still working through the night, a little bit behind on my schedule, but things in terms of how they're progressing, they're progressing well. Uh, I got the animation done that I wanted to get done. Uh, moving forward, that uh, in terms of how the video production is working across the network, that's working well. Uh, and as I say, is that uh, I'm on a nerd fighters group in in uh, in uh, I'm on a list group in nerd fighters. Uh, nerd fighters has a, is its own group. Uh, it has its own web page on Ning, uh, and they have groups and so, so you know different groups that they have in there. And I'm in one of the uh, Linux groups. Nerd, I'm on the Linux nerd fighter if they want to, if you want to call it that. Uh, and one guy was asking how to uh, run Linux within. Um, uh, Within the uh, the, the server of, uh, server of 2003, that's a, a, a Microsoft product. But the thing is, is once you get into a server environment, uh, you no longer run Linux or any other pro uh, or any other uh, or any other uh, operating system within another operating system. Uh, you what you do is you set up uh, segmented clusters. Uh, so what happens is that let's say uh, you want to have a multiple environment. You have one group or cluster of 2003 servers, and then you have another one of Linux servers, cluster of Linux servers, separated on the network. By you know, you, you, you need to, in other words, uh, geom uh, network geometry when you're getting into the, ser the server uh, management matters. Even on the on, on a small scale here, like my 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 network is not a large scale network. But segmenting the network matters because it allows you to organize how you do your work across a desktop. Uh, I'll give an example: is I need this as my main workstation here. But a lot of times, uh, if I'm working on here and I need to get work done, I can't do the rendering because the rendering locks up uh, on videos. If you're doing video editing, and the rendering that locks things up uh, for an hour or so. So the best way to do it, if if you're up, if you're up working at the time, is to offload the rendering onto a serv on, onto a server or a system that's not being used in the network. So that's what I do. Is I have three main places where I do video editing in the office here, and uh, right now I have a video that that's not for uh, X Plus. Uh, uploading to the internet, uh, it was rendered on that thing. It, it had been rendering on there while well, this while well, this station here, this workstation, stayed free. So if you don't organize and segment your network, and uh, then you're not going to be able to really leverage and use the system to its best potential. 
there's always going to be a shortfall. And so like this, and the segmenting, it also, also depends on the functions you want to do things on. Uh, like I decided, I put in, when I decided to upgrade my network, I, I had had a smaller network before, then I, uh, instead of just, just clunking and stuff randomly, I had to go back in and des design the thing from the ground up. Uh, so, re you know, re redesign it from the ground up. And what I decided to do is I decided to put in, uh, rather than putting in multiple routers, is I used uh, smaller size, uh, uh, eight switch, eight, 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 uh, eight port switch uh, switches, eight, uh, yeah, eight port switches. These are switches with eight ports on them. They're, uh, the transmission through them is one gigabit, gigabit, gigabit per second. So this is, is, is basically 10 hundred thousand. It's capable of, of, of that thousand mark there. Uh, the thousand uh, megabits per second, or one gigabit per second. So I now have a gig. Uh, I now I have now a gig I have a gigabit per second uh, uh, network uh, backbone. Uh, then I segmented it. I have one is for the main library. N another one is for my electronics back here, uh, and then I have another port. Uh, that will set up and go into the back room, which does the back room library where I do my where I where I sleep and do my reading and do adventures in the library. And then I'm also having that's going to port off and, and, and add into uh, another switch, which will uh, serve uh, the back warehouse, which will become uh, the engineering and machine shop. So. <clears throat> That's how, you know, that's how I've organized my, my systems. Uh, I've really found no need for Microsoft whatsoever. So, uh, people say, oh, I need Microsoft for X, Y, and Z. I really haven't found any reason for engineering, for science, for research, uh, anything in those areas there. Uh, even on the business side of things, I really don't see a need for Microsoft server, desktop, or otherwise. I have no problems running Linux at all. I've got, and this is in a production environment, I've got a good backup and transition from from uh, various different versions. Like right now, I'm preparing my, uh, my uh, transition to 12.4. Uh, and Again, no issues. There, there, there are really no issues in upgrading that I have in terms in terms of that things are catastrophic for me. So uh, I really, if 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 you're the type of person who's into IT, you're thinking, and, and maybe you've always been on Windows and more of a Windows person, but want more of a flexibility. You want to, you really get into the backbone of the internet. Uh, I do recommend Linux. Uh, I don't recommend to people out there that you dual boot or, or dual load. And this is what a lot of people do. They'll say, "Oh, I, I have, I have, a, I, I want to put, I, I want to put Linux on my system, but I don't want to take Windows off." And so what they'll do is they'll, they'll create a partition in their hard drive, and they'll make the hard drive dual boot, so you can boot into either Linux or Windows. And a lot of people I see that do a dual boot have an enormous amount of problems every time they they try, they try to go back and forth between two different things. Uh, it seems the system always messes up. And my recommendation is very simple. It's very cheap now to go out and get a refurbished system that will easily run Linux. And if you want to run Linux, you want to try Linux out, don't do a boot from your, uh, from your, from your regular hard drive on, on, on Windows. Create a, get, get, buy a, brand, buy a, a refurbished system and put Linux on there. Have one system on uh, Linux and one system on Windows. And if you're so inclined, you want to share stuff back and forth, that not, you just get a, a, a simple router with a four, a four position switch, and uh, you can set up a small network where they, they, the two computers can talk to each other over the network. So you can share files, you can print, share printers, you can do all the things on a shared network that you would normally do uh, on a Windows network. So. As I said, I don't see a need for dual boot. I don't see a need to put uh, one server inside another server. Uh, run separate servers. So that's my suggestion there. 
Anyway, that's it for this segment. Um, I will be going and doing another segment around 5 o'clock in the morning. And I'll see you then. <laughs> All right. Well, it's just about 5 o'clock in the morning. Oh, you yeah, know, actually, <laughs> look at the time now. It's, uh, it's 5.30 in the morning. Uh, finishing up the day. Uh, just going through some of my uh, YouTube list. <sighs> I've been running last... Today and tomorrow I'll be running tests on the, um... On the, what you call it, on the, uh... The cooling system, uh, we're having some hot days here. I want to see at this setting where it is now, which is the slowest setting, uh, how far I can push it. And then, uh, if it's not accessible, how far I can push the system in terms of uh, uh, what it's able to cool and, and uh, the energy expenditure. That's the thing, too, as well. Is, uh, this is the, I, I, I do things uh, uh, my usual way, right? N nothing is brand new, necessarily brand new. Things are are, are refurbished or, or bits and pieces of things, and you're trying to push equipment as far as it will go, or even further. Uh, and what the problem that's happening now is that a, a little bit of a problem that's coming in is the humidity. Humidities are up high, and that's causing a bit of an issue, but. Uh, I don't know how much of an issue it's going to cause. So that's kind of... Uh, so, we're moving on. This is the last segment. Um, it's not going to go to the editing bay tonight. It'll, go, it'll be there on, it'll be on the editing bay in the morning. So, anyways. Uh, that's it for tonight. That's it for today. And I'll see you guys uh, tomorrow. All right, take it easy. Uh, 16:34 or 4:30, 4:34. The non-geeks out there. Uh, just finished watching Cassandra. Uh, Cassandra on Nerds RL. Uh, she said good night to her people. I was supposed to say good night. This was supposed to be in the uh, editing bag, uh, 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 uploading, but things have since changed. I was supposed to go to bed uh, and shut down and do everything by five o'clock in the morning. That didn't happen. I didn't end up getting to bed till around six to so shut down. Then I got up for some reason. I don't know why it is. I got up at eight thirty again. Uh, stayed up till 9.30, and that's in the morning. Uh, and then, um, at 1 o'clock, uh, I went over to my parents' house. And just a little while ago, at 4 o'clock, I got back. So, this is another one of those days that have morphed into a single day. So that's where we're going with things today. It's, it's going to be... Anytime you see something like this, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm, I'm going to title change the title just a little bit. Um, rather than using X plus and spelling out the word plus, you'll see the plus symbol. And then I'm going to go into the mathematics and use the brackets and equal signs. So we're going we're, we're gonna, to we're see how this works out. You'll see how... So I can label uh, the uh, the... 48 hour plus days. That's what we're working on now. 48 plus hour days. Uh, so, what can I say? This is the way things go. You know, it's, it's the second one in less than a week. So, uh, see in a little bit. Well, it's uh, 10:30. Uh, this uh, it's been. Actually, a very long weekend. Yeah, I was thinking I started doing this uh, this uh, late night roll, this sort of uh, continuous day on Friday. 
so it's now getting into two as well. It's, no, it's, this is what happens when I'm tired like this uh, and I haven't slept properly uh, because one day more since the other. I forget what day it is. Or, Tuesday going into Wednesday. So uh, I made. I had to make some adjustments to my cooling system. I looked at the temperature. It was all right, but I think things could have been better. So I made some minor adjustments to the system. I'm uh, gonna test it up, see how that actually ended up working out, and I go from there. And then. Uh, Probably by the end of next week, I'll probably add the. Uh, there's several phases to the, uh, the the cooling system, and I think I'll be putting the uh, the final phase, sort of the second phase, in uh, next week. Basically, what you have to do is when you're cooling a place uh, a, using um, the wind chill effect, you have to find, and this this is the, this is the case. There's always points in any building. Or on any floor where heat and air pools, and that's where you've got to put the fans. Uh, fans need to go and move that pool around. Once the pool starts to move, then you're all right. Uh, because anything in between, uh, while the pools behave like ponds and lakes and without much movement, uh, the in between, between, you know, like rivers that have movement. So this this uh, look at heat and air uh, follows the lines of thermodynamics and fluid dynamics, uh, which, uh, which ironically heat, air, and liquids all have a very similar behavior. So uh, basically, what I'm doing here is uh, this is part of my study into. Uh, fluid and thermodynamics. So <laughs> I said, rather than doing things just simply as they are, I always like to w incorporate into my, my environment. I, I, I can could, I could even track the time of the seasons uh, with my clock uh, based on temperature because as the standard temperature of the place uh, rises, uh, you know, uh, and the thing is, that your standard, what we'll call mean temperature, is the average temperature between the high and the low. Every every day there is a high temperature and then there's a low temperature. Uh, the high temperature usually occurs around midday, between two and four o'clock in the afternoon, and then it starts to dip down in the evening and you're basically at your coolest around between 2 and 4 in the morning. So the the average, the, dif the difference between the two, or, or the difference between the two, sort of, <laughs> uh, gives you your, well, it gives you your, your, your temperature spread for the day, but it also tells you where your, your your daily average So I'll give an example. Let's say you have a daytime high of 70 degrees and a, a, a day a nighttime a nighttime low of uh, 60 degrees. So the lowest 60 degrees, the high is 70 degrees. That's your high. The difference between the two is 10 degrees. Uh, what could end up happening is that the difference between the two could shrink down to, to, to like eight degrees, an eight degree difference. But that's sort of, uh, I think, another issue. Where what you want to see is that as long as it stays in that frame there, so it could be 60, 70, 70, 80, 80, 90, in that range there as the season progresses towards summer. And as you go from summer to fall, it will reverse and go from 80, 90, 70, 80, 60, 70. And as you move towards the winter, 
and you get the cold temperatures, and, that, and then it starts turning around and starts to increase again. You can chart this movement using a clock by noting when the clock moves off of calibration. And if you have to shorten the swing of the pendulum, as you, and, and that corrects the, 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 the clock itself, it brings it back into calibration where it's standard time. Uh, what you're seeing is uh, you're seeing a contraction of the gears. Wait a minute, let's see. You're, you're seeing you no. Know, if, if you shorten the time, you shorten the pendulum swing. You're moving the pendulum up. You're getting a expansion of the gears. Because they're inverted, the, the thing is that's inverse. But as you as you increase the uh, rate of the pendulum, that means you have to move things faster to get a, 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 along around the um, around the gears. So that means the gears have expanded rather than contracted. If they contract, you want to decrease the rate at which the pendulum spins, uh, swings back and forth, uh, and that tells you your, temper your, your temperature is decreasing. So, in the summer, we start moving the swing of the pendulum up, we start moving faster as we move towards the summer to correct for the heat, and then as the, the summer day comes to its peak, the peak heat, and that's not necessarily the uh, 21st of June, that's when summer is, but occurs after that point. There seems to be a lag in it, and then you start moving the pendulum, uh, the speed of the pendulum down again. You lengthen the uh, the swing of the pendulum in order to correct for the, dec the decreasing temperature. Then as this is as the gear that adjusts the temperature. So as I said, uh, you want to do your cooling by uh, by wind the wind chill effect. That's basically using a, a thermodynamic mechanism to cool the cool the place. Uh, then uh, if you want to sort of chart it you can use a pendulum clock. So that, that, that's, that's, that's the fun here. That's, that, that's the way I did doing some of my physics. Uh, I'm still working on my my, uh, my uh, atmospheric uh, physics uh, observatory on here. Uh, and then once I finish the atmospheric, uh, the atmospheric observatory, uh, atmospheric physics observatory, excuse me, atmospheric physics observatory, then I'll move on to the astronomical observatory on here as well. So, uh, that's what I'm sort of milling around today, doing some more uh, video production. You know, the usual. <laughs> study, 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 study. All right, see you in a bit. Well, it's uh, just about a little after 1.30 in the morning, and I just finished getting Linux Music, music Studio working. So... The music studio, the piano, is now hooked up to the computer. Um, and, there you go. There we go. The keyboard is now hooked up to the computer. I can record in Audacity. Uh, I've also got it hooked up to several MIDI sequencers on, on Linux, so the music studio is all ready to go. Now I have to learn how to compose music and uh, brush up on my playing skills. So I, you know, this is this is part of what I do on a basis, daily basis. Um, uh, once I get this working here in a better condition, the next step is Vocaloids, uh, because uh, from here you go into Vocaloids, and then from there. Uh, I plan to do some uh, techno hip hop. Uh, that's your beginning stuff, and then migrate into the more complex. Um, how does this connect to robotics and, uh, and cyborgs and cybernetics? Well, uh, using sound, uh, particularly keyboard and the computers, you can generate the voice. When you work with the voice, this is the vo you can use the, that that voice in the uh, the way you use your singing. To understand, to understand how people speak, to understand how 
auditory sounds come out. So that leads you into acoustical physics. Uh, from acoustical physics, you can go from there uh, and create a program that hears different voice characteristics and then translates it or pro provides a, 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 a verbal response. So if you want to have a verbally interactive computer, uh, in other words, a cyborg that you want to talk that you want to talk to, these are the components that go into it. So uh, there is an enormous amount that needs to get done here. Uh, still at the beginning stages of things. Uh, playing, playing around with things. Playing is so important. Uh, I was talking to my mom today about uh, at the house about the different things that geeks do and showing all about the movies, the, Aven the Avengers and stuff like that. And she watches the show uh, Big Bang Theory on CBS and notes how they all play with uh, various different things. But a lot of playing, even though it is childish, uh, really does provide a good sense or a good uh, path to learning new things. So it doesn't have to be sort of a dead space. It could be something that's a lot more progressive, and, and not not in the in socialist, but but in terms of where you are, in terms of what you understand and what you know. So that this is the accomplishment tonight. Uh, I'm still going to be pushing forward uh, to see what else I can tick off the list. But I, said I do want to go outside and sit for a little bit, get some fresh air. Adjusted the, I said, I said before, I adjusted the uh, cooling system, and uh, well, that's it for right now. And uh, I'll be back in in a little bit. It's five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah, and this day is still going on, although it's coming to somewhat of an end. I hope. Uh, just finished up with. Uh, some uh, debugging on the network and a cup of hot chocolate, uh, not a hot chocolate, a cup of chocolate milk and some Greek cookies. So I'm playing the shutdown now. We're shutting myself. We're shutting down. The computers are going to stay on. They've got work to do. Uh, and then. Uh, Aiming to sort of start again, uh, maybe around noon. You know, get things uploaded, edited, edited, uploaded, and go from there. All right. Free speech rules here at Democratic Earth.